Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a super fun thing I did this weekend. I went to the San Francisco International Pen Show. The San Francisco International Pen Show happens in Redwood City, California every year, which is about an hour-ish south of San Francisco. And it's put on by the San Francisco Bay Pen Posse, a group of which I am a member. This is my third year in a row going, and this year was crazy because it was so much busier than any of the other years. I've always gone on Saturday, which is pretty well known to be the busiest day, but this was a whole other story. It was hard to like pass between the tables, people were selling out of pens left and right, there were no slots available at any of the nib customizers, even though there were five of them, and there were vendors and people from all over the world just for the pen show which kind of boggles my mind. I can barely make it the hour it takes to get there, and I only really go for one day. But nonetheless, I had so, so much fun. I went with a couple of my coworkers from the Lamy store, as well as from Mido, which is another stationary store in San Francisco. So it was nice to be among my, my pen people. And I saw some other pen friends there as well, that I had met only previously online and some that I had already met at previous shows or from when I worked at the store. All in all, I had a great time. I found some really, really weird pieces of history and just strange pens that I'm excited to show you. I picked up some pretty cool stuff for myself as well that I'm very excited to show you as well. First off, I'm gonna show you some footage I took of the show and some of the weird pens I saw there. So, needless to say, there are a lot of pens at a pen show, and almost immediately I was completely overwhelmed. A lot of the pens I looked at were just shiny. I'm kind of like a bird when it comes to pen. There was this nice wall, there was this platinum coated Lamy. This was actually a combo pen, but different from the ones I showed you guys, this one is solid 14 karat gold. This is a super rare Eversharp Coronet. And this one is the Monte Grappa Game of Thrones, which weighs probably like a pound and is honestly pretty ugly. This was a super chunky Japanese eyedropper and another old Ebonite eyedropper in the Waterman number 20. This one also had a gigantic nib that was super flexy for the low, low price of $3,000. I also got to try out a Waterman Music Flex Nib, which are super, super rare and are known to be some of the most wonderful flex nibs on the market. And I gotta say, there's definitely a reason behind that rumor. They're so, so nice and maybe worth the price. Now I'm going to be going over what I picked up at the San Francisco Pen Show. First off, I'm going to show you some ink. This was actually the first thing I got because it was free. It came in a bag at the front. Um, Monteverde was one of the sponsors, or I guess Yaffa, which is the parent company of Monteverde, was one of the sponsors for this pen show. They put a bottle of ink in our uh, little grab bags at the beginning. It's a pretty nice blue, if not a little bit boring, um, but hey, free ink. I cannot complain. Another bottle of ink I picked up, which was not free, uh, was this bottle of Straits Pen Rosé by the Box. And I don't take myself to be a very superficial guy, but I, uh, I definitely bought this just because it was called Rosé by the Box. And it comes in a sailor bottle, the old style, which are very sought after. They're very nice. They fill very well and they're just pretty. I picked it up for that reason. Uh, the color is nice. I definitely wasn't buying it on that merit alone. But yeah, pretty cool. And now the big thing and a couple other things inside is this Galen Leather A5 folio in what they call natural leather. Um, so it is, it's real leather. Um, it's handmade in Turkey and it's beautiful. I've been looking at one online for a while. I hadn't actually seen this color. I was looking at a green one, but I went with it. And what it is, it's a notebook cover that is zippered and it also holds many other things. I'll turn it towards you. 
So, uh, yeah, it's got a spot for a notebook. Um, it's got this little pen holder, which holds four pens. Um, it's got two little slots here. It's got another one here. I've got my loop in there for looking at nibs and such. Um, it's got a whole other pocket in here for spare, like, loose papers. Some card holders. I'm not going to use this as a wallet. But, you know, just a place for stickers, got a business card, got some blotting paper, um, another little pocket behind here, I've got a ruler in there. Um, basically just like a super cool solution to just holding all the things I need on a daily basis for, you know, drawing and note taking, which is a lot of what I do. And then just this, I didn't buy this notebook here, but it's one I've been using for work. Um, it's a life notebook. I'll probably review these at some point, but... Um, yeah, I'm in love with it. It's so cool. It allows me to just bring one thing in my bag and just have that with me all day. It is a little bit heavy, lo fully loaded, but I all I need other than this is like, you know, keys and a wallet. Alright, so this I already had, so that's going away. Um, but these are the things I picked up at the show. So, one of these pens I bought at the show. This is an Eversharp Skyline. Uh, in the moiré finish, which is basically, they make them in solid colors, um, but this is like kind of an iridescent stripe material. Really, really, really pretty. I've always wanted one of these. Uh, it's got a gold cap top, which is really pretty. Um, and the nib is what sold me on this one. I saw a couple of these at the show in different colors. I liked the blue one more than this actually, but this has a flexible italic nib, which is just super super fun to write with and I'll show you a sample of that in just a moment. Um, in addition to that I picked up a couple of pens from Stacy Hills. I had him restore these a while out. Um, so we have a Wall Eversharp Doric which is this pen here. It is a 12-sided pen from about 1935. Um, it's got this really cool long gold nib on there. It's not flexible at all, but it's super nice. And it's a vacuum filler. So the whole body fills with ink. You unscrew the knob here. Similar to those Schaefer's in my uh, Schaefer tuck away video, but you know, I'm not gonna do it now because it's full. Um, it holds a lot of ink, writes really smoothly, and then Stacy polished it. And it looks, it looks like new, um, aside from like the engraving, which is almost not even there anymore. But I've wanted these, one of these for the longest time. I found it for a great price on eBay, and even after getting it restored, it was still like way under what it should have gone for. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, and then next, um, this was, this is a Schaefer Military Balance. Um, I forget the exact name of this, but it's, it's a full size version. I have a slimmer one as well, but this one's a vacuum filler as well. So it's got, you know, that, that piston at the back. It fills the whole body with ink. This one is more transparent. I don't know if you can see that in the light at all, but uh, and then the nib on this one is a very uncommon flexible nib. Though it is aftermarket, so it was made flexible by someone, it still, you know, means to an end. It's a flexible nib. It's really nice. Holds a lot of ink. And of course it comes with a pencil. Um, you might remember these types of clips from my Schaefer, Schaefer Tuckaway video, just these are true military clips. Um, and this is a pen I've been carrying for a couple days now and just love it. I originally had the nib on a different pen and I had Stacy swap it onto this one because the other one didn't hold enough ink, and this one does. Super comfortable in the hand and I think it's really cool. First off for the writing sample, we have the Eversharp Doric, which has a fine manifold nib. Manifold nibs were originally meant for doing carbon copies, so they're super, super stiff, but still really nice to use. The Military Balance has that super, super fine, but also decently flexible, lifetime two-tone gold nib. I really, really like this nib. and. I also used an Ackerman ink in it, which matches the body very, very well. It's their uh, sap green. Finally, I've got the Eversharp Skyline with my new, probably favorite nib. It is a stub flex nib, and you can see there, it's pretty wild. I'll be doing one more in depth in my flex nib video coming up in a week or two. 
Altogether, I had a really, really, really fun time at this year's San Francisco Pen Show. It's the first year I went with other pen people, so that totally changed the experience in that, you know, we would like dive in and be looking at pens for a while separately, and then we'd meet up and be like, oh my god, look at this cool thing I found. And it was just so nice to be there with other people um, instead of by myself, just being a quiet nerd. Um, but I think, you know, that's the that's the real magic of pen shows is meeting the people. Especially the vendors are so cool because some of them have just specialized in like one brand of pen and just know every single thing about that brand. There was a guy who was selling Wall Eversharps. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he knew everything. He knew like all the model numbers from like, you know, 1910 to 1940. And he had pretty much one of every pen they ever made on his table. It was, I talked to him for like 20 minutes, just like asking him questions. Um, but that's the real magic of it is these people have so much just knowledge and wisdom when it comes to pens so many people are skilled in restoration and with the calligraphy and all this kind of stuff and it's really inspiring to see like so much passion for analog stuff and especially just seeing how many people were there um in an increasingly digital focused world it's really cool to have an experience where you're just around a lot of people who love analog stuff like fountain pens and paper and ink and you know, love the impracticality of it all. So for anyone who lives in the San Francisco Bay Area or doesn't, I highly recommend coming to the Pen Show in San Francisco. It's really, really cool. I haven't been to any of the other ones, but there's a very special place in my heart for this one. Um, to all of the people who I saw there, hey, it was nice seeing you again. I can't wait to go back next year. Hopefully at some point I'll make it to like the LA pen show, which is usually in February, but you know, that's a lot of money to be spending in one year on pens. So I'll probably stick to just the one, but I'm satisfied with that for sure. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more stuff. My next video is going to be really cool. I'm doing a kind of comparison and overview of flex nibs when they were made how they were made and you know the different grades of them so look out for that next week um, I'm starting school soon which is exciting I'll have a chance to use all my pens but for the time being thanks for watching again and have a good one